Today we're going to talk about body plans and we're going to talk about um, not only the three main organs, a leaf, stem, and a root of a plant, but also those three tissues, dermal, vascular, uh, ground, and vascular, and then also some of those cells that make up the, the different tissues. Now, when we take a look at this magnolia tree, one of the things we need to keep in mind is that plants are primarily going to grow vertically. They're gonna grow from those apical meristems way up at the very, very tip of the shoot and the apical meristems that are down in the roots that we're not able to see. And so that allows plants to grow in this vertical dimension. Now, because this is a magnolia tree, it's also going to grow horizontally. And it's going to do that secondary growth for the lateral uh, meristems. Again, there are totipotent cells, those cells that don't have an identity and can, be, you know, can become anything, can become dermal, ground, or vascular tissue. Um, those totipotent cells in the vascular cambium will help make this tree start to become girthy. So when we start to look at plant growth, we're really looking at that vertical and horizontal expansion of most plants. And what we see when we start to look at those three organs, the leaf, stem, and the root, is that plants are going to do different things with them. So we take a look at this magnolia's leaves. First of all, we see a simple leaf structure. We have one great big blade, one clearly distinguished petiole, connecting it back to the rest of this main stem. The veins, the vascular tissue in this leaf show us a nut venation. In other words, I've got lots of individual veins, uh, vascular tissue, xylem and phloem coming together at multiple nodes before it connects into that petiole. We look at the larger picture of how our plant is arranging its organs, its leaf organs on the stem, what we see is that we have an alternate leaf arrangement. So one leaf comes out here to the left, the next one to the right, the next one to the left, the next one to the right. And the whole purpose for this is that when those leaves are alternating along the stem, they're not shading one another adversely. We're getting the maximum amount of sunlight exposure that every leaf can have. And remember, sunlight is food for the plant. So essentially, by alternating where those leaves are at, the leaves are not competing with them each other in order to get as much food for the plant, enough sunlight. Now inside of each of the cells, we know that um, inside those cells, the motor proteins will be doing cytoplasmic streaming. And cytoplasmic streaming will be moving the chloroplast organelles, adjusting them within the cells as the sunlight starts to move across the, the horizon and we get those different intensities by cytoplasmic streaming and moving those chloroplast organelles, our plant is able to again get more food or on really, really, really intense days, hide those chloroplast organelles so they don't get damaged. So our plant is really designing its body or really making its body in such a way to make sure that it's always maximizing um, as much food, as much sunlight intensity as it possibly can. Now, I want to focus in again on the, the leaf. And with the leaf, this outermost layer of tissue is the dermal tissue. The dermal tissue surrounds every organ. So it's along the stem here and it would be down along the roots as well. It's often just a few cells thick. Now in the, the dermal tissue, we're going to have the cuticle cells secreting a thick waxy cuticle. And this leaf, if you were to feel it and kind of bend it, you would feel that it's very, very thick, very, very durable. And that's in part due to the cuticle cells. The other cells that we would find would be those guard cells. And the guard cells are like lips. And when the guard cells open, they make the stoma, that big hole that allows gas exchange to come in and out of the leaf. Now the guard cells can also have chloroplast organelles, so they can do double duty. They can do photosynthesis and they can be controlling carbon dioxide getting in and oxygen getting out of our plant leaf. Now our plant leaf is really fluffy. There are lots and lots of air spaces inside of this plant leaf. This is a eudicot, so I know this would be especially fluffy. If it were a grass, a monocot, 
uh, then our, we wouldn't have as much airspace. Because remember our grasses and our monocots tend to be uh, adapted to areas where it's a lot drier and we have the need to conserve moisture. But this uticot is adapted to places that has uh, a lot that have a lot of water. So if there's some evaporation through those air spaces, through the stoma uh, made by the guard cells, that will be okay. The other part of the dermal tissue that's important are going to be those trichomes. And trichomes have all kinds of different shapes. They're modified cells for being able to um, essentially stop anything from chewing on this leaf. And we can see that there has been some chewing, so it's not like it's a great defense system, but at least it's something. And I can feel, and even if I turn it into the sunlight, I can see some of those trichomes and that kind of fuzzy uh, appearance that lets me know that those cells um, and the dermal tissue are, are helping to protect our leaf. Now, in between our two layers of dermal tissue will be the ground tissue, those parenchyma cells with very thin cell walls, the collinchyma cells with a little bit thicker cell walls, and then our sclerenchyma cells. Our vascular tissue, our xylem and phloem, will be these very distinct veins. Now this plant is going to have both types of xylem cells, both the vessel elements that essentially make a straw from the leaf all the way down into the roots, and the tracheids. Remember with the tracheids, we've got that kind of side-by-side -side sitting of the cells. They're tapered on either end and they kind of sit side-by-side -side to one another and that causes the water to go into zigzag fashion. It's much more efficient to have those vessel elements stacked one on top of each other going from the leaf to the root. It means we can get faster and more efficient water transfer from the roots to the uh, shoots to the eventual leaves where we're going to need most of that water for photosynthesis. Our leaves are making sugars through photosynthesis, making glucose. And that glucose is gonna be traveling from the source, the leaf, to the sink, and that sink could be a developing flower or fruit, or it could be down in the roots, depending on what the plant is doing and depending on the time of year. Our phloem tissue is made up of sieve tube members. Those are the cells that are moving the sugars, and then the companion cells. The companion cells have the nucleus and provide a lot of the energy and protein so that the sieve tube members can do their job moving the sugars from the source, in this case the leaf, to the sink, wherever that sink may be in the plant, whether it's a flower, fruit, or down into the roots. So when we take a look at our plant, we have to remember that essentially they're fairly straightforward. Three types of tissue, dermal, ground, and vascular. Three organs, leaf, stem, and root. And with that simplicity, what they can do is adjust and modify to get the resources that they need. And so one thing that I love about this tree is that all of the leaves and growth have been happening in this direction. That's because that's where the majority of light comes from. The oak trees are shading this other side of the plant, so why would I bother putting any leaf or stem organs out over there? They're not gonna get any food. I'm going to invest all of those organs and grow them in this direction, essentially reaching and grasping for the light, grasping for the food. I know plant bodies are really complicated. We've got that quintessential picture drawn in our notebooks of what we wish they all looked like. And what a lot of plants are going to do is shrink their leaves or blow up their leaves or shrink their stems or blow up their stems. And they're gonna modify their body in all kinds of weird ways. But always come back and ask yourself, is this a leaf, a stem or a root? A leaf is a terminal structure. Nothing else can grow from it. A stem has those nodes, has those axillary buds, will have other things growing from it. And roots will primarily have nothing growing from them but other roots. Keep that in mind when you're looking at all the funky weird ways that plants have modified themselves. And as always, if you have any questions, email me, email me, email me.